first cast of the day. Let's see if we can get something. There's a bite. First fish on on the first cast. I need a net. <laughs> Please. <laughs> first one. That is awesome. Yeah, it's a nice sheepy too. Right there. <laughs> How do you not know where the net is on the boat? <laughs> there we go. Alrighty. We got mom here with the net. Thank you much. Yeah, look how light color that one is. Oh, you're beautiful. That was the first cast on the first shrimp. Hello. That is awesome. What I like to say, if you catch a fish on the first cast, you're either going to have a really great day or that's going to be the only fish you catch. Hopefully, it'll hold true and we can actually have a really good day this time, which I think we will. I think we found a school of them. But look at that. That's a nice, healthy sheep's head. He's going to go in the cooler. State of Alabama, they do have to be 12 inches four clink. That's from the tip of the nose to the middle of their tail, the fork length. And you're allowed 10 a person. Delicious eating, great fish right there. Sheep's head, woohoo. Let's throw them in the cooler, y'all. He gone. <laughs> so just caught that really nice sheep's head and there is a pretty 65 foot hatteras right there. That's about the same, almost the same exact boat I was a mate on before I joined the army. So 65 foot, really nice riding boats. Let me just show you the tackle breakdown real quick. I'm using a Daiwa Saltus MQ with 15 pound power pro super slick braid, Star Plasma 2 rod, and none of these are rod sponsors. I buy these with my own money. And then a one ounce bank sinker on a drop shot rig. So 20 pound fluorocarbon. And a foot from my sinker is a size one J hook, another foot up to an Eagle Claw barrel swivel. So you can get all that stuff, excluding the rod and reel, but you can get all the tackle and other lures and whatever else you may need to get out on the water and have a good day at BamaSaltWater.com. Purchases made there help support the channel and allow you to get some nice tackle, lures, etc. So that's the tackle breakdown. Let's get another bait out there and see if we can get some more fish. All I do is hook it right where that horn meets the body. It'll stay alive and look very natural on the hook that way. Come right here along the seawall again. If you watch my other video, see we actually did pretty good over here. See if we can pull out some more. Mom is going to have the second fish on deck today, looks like. There we go. That's a pretty one, isn't it? <laughs> really pretty. Look at the colors on it. Very light color in the sun. That's about average size. The ones that we were catching the other day were pretty big. All right. Mom with the second sheep's head on deck. Good job. Thank you. Got him. <laughs> See if we could keep them pinned. This will be number two for me today. Come on. Get up here, man. Come on. Oh, yeah. That's not a bad one. It's not a bad one. Look at that. Pulling a little drag. All righty. Come on, man. Get up here. <laughs> He's feisty. Here, let him get up on the surface. That one's a little bit bigger. A little bit larger size. Yeah, look how thick that one is. Look at that, that's another good one. These things are what we like fishing for. You're gonna see a lot of sheep's head fishing because that's what we catch this time of year down here. They're very abundant. They taste good, they fight hard, and uh, you don't have to go very far for them. Well, I need to tie up though. I've caught a bunch of fish on that same rig and it finally broke. At least we got this fish on deck. More carbon in my mouth because I'm retying. So if you hear me talk funny, I don't wanna lose my leader. My mom's got a good fish. Bring her in, bring it in. There it is. <laughs> One in the net. <laughs> it's peeing. <laughs> it's like a bluegill, they're peeing. Look at the teeth on that joker. It looks like Mater <laughs> from Cars. Oh, he's nibbling on it. As soon as I threw it in there. Is he gonna hold on to it? Oh, there it is. Dang. Dang. That's a good one so far. At least it feels like it. Good gracious. Come on, get up here, you. Oh, I just want to see. I just want to see you. This one's pulling pretty good. Well, I just want to get him up. I haven't even been able to pull him up to see him yet. Uh-uh. 
I haven't even pulled him up to see him yet. There he is. He's not a giant, but he's pretty dang good size. That sucker fought me a little bit more than, than I wanted. That's a good one. Thank you. There we go. That's a good one right there. Look at that. <laughs> Can you see his teeth? Chomp, chomp, chomp. In the cooler you go. There it is. <clears throat> Come on. <laughs> yeah, I have one. Uh, it's pulling drag pretty good. You know, I have a very tight drag. But you still have to let him play a little bit. But he's actually taking me around the boat. That's the first one that's taken me on this side so far. <laughs> I just want to see you. Dang, I haven't had one take me on this side of the boat yet. That's a good one. There we go. Thank you. That's a pretty big one. <laughs> Thanks for the net job. All righty. That's another fish for the cooler. So that was a pretty good one. Let's see. It's crazy how many are just hanging down there. Got it. All right. Not a bad one. <laughs> Almost. There you go. You got it? Yeah, I got him. I was doing it one handed there. Thank you. Yeah, good job. <laughs> That's another sheep's head. These are fun. They're fun to catch. All right, y'all, we're calling it quits. That was a pretty good fishing day. If you want to go get some of those hooks and tackle and lures and whatever else I use on the channel, you can go check it out on BamaSaltWater.com. Hopefully, you can learn and get out and go catch you some sheep's head. You don't have to have a boat to catch sheep's head. They're around any types of structure, pier, docks, rocks, canals, bridges, whatever. If they're structure in the winter, normally there's going to be some sheep's head hanging around. Let's see. Let's pick this one. This one's a big one and still fresh, been on ice see their nostrils really cool so let's go ahead and pick this one out to clean it's like a fish market right here so i got a sheep set i'm going to show you how i like to fillet it um these you can leave whole and scale as well but right now i'm going to fillet it so i am using a sword seven inch flex fillet you can go get you one or go check out sword linked down below as well so they also have the serrated which helps a lot but i'll just show you just with this regular fillet knife right here seven inch they got a large pectoral fan that's how come they can stay suspended. And if you haven't already seen, he's missing some top teeth. What's that? He's only got, this is an Alabama sheep's head here. <laughs> I could say that I'm from Alabama, but I <laughs> <and> live here. <laughs> Look at that. See, see those teeth. But I like to go behind that pectoral fin, find a soft spot and just kind of open it up in between the scales. You can take your time. You don't have to rush through. See, and they're not too bad. You can have an electric knife as well. That's what we used to use, but sharp fillet knife like this will get the job done. So once I come up to that head, I'm gonna come back around, rotate that knife, and go right along that dorsal. I'm just trying to work my way all the way back there. See, he's got a weird gap right there. Looks like something happened to him. Don't know what, maybe a bird guy after him. Just follow that dorsal all the way back. You can hear his air bladder decompressing, but I just take that flex fillet and work it right along his bones. Really easy, look at that. Beautiful meat in there. See that head meat? That's why everyone thinks it's hard to get through them because their scales in that rib cage they just have a really large rib cage see where it stops or starts it starts right here and comes down just like that so you have this upper loin then the fillet opens up so i'll show you okay once you go down to their spine see their spine right there i like to flip it over on these bigger ones and open the bottom up just like that all the way to the stomach and just kind of fillet it to meet in the middle here. Just be careful not to cut yourself. See, now we have that in the middle. Now we can cut it right off just like that. See, nothing really missed. That's that back part of the sheep's head. Now we're gonna go along this rib cage and fillet this meat off and just kind of fillet right over it. See how you can open it up. 
just like that. And that's not a worm, that's just its stomach cavity and stomach lining right there, connective tissue. So we, what I normally do is I'll go clean this up and trim this out. But see how big their rib cage is? There's really not that much meat over here. Now I know you can go clean this up, gut it, and then go boil that or poach it and get some of that meat out. You know, not waste any. But for us, I like to fillet it just for ease of use and storage. That's as simple as it gets. That's a, not a bad fillet job right there. See, really no miss meat on the main part of that fish. Like I said, big rib cage and that head, you could still use it if you want to make like fish head soup or something, but it's real bony. See, really bony. <laughs> Last thing I like to do, if I'm not cooking this on the half shell or baking it, I like to skin it. And so take this knife, kind of hold on to the end and parallel to that skin, just work your knife right along there. They have a tough skin, so you can be kind of aggressive with it, but just let that knife do the work and pull that fillet, see? And they have some red meat on the skin, this little layer of fat, and that will give the fish kind of an off taste if you leave it in there, which I know plenty of people, everybody has different taste buds, we're all human, so to each their own, if you like eating that red meat, eat it, it's good protein. I Me mean, personally, when I store it, it'll break down and cause it to be fishy if I store it in the freezer in a vacuum seal with that red meat. So we're gonna trim that out. Got it, so it is the next day. The sheep's head just sat in the fridge. They were clean and dried. And look at that, really fresh meat there. So I'm doing something really easy. We're gonna make some fish tacos, okay? The good thing about tacos and being human and have different taste buds is the options are unlimited of what you wanna do. Went to the store and grabbed just something real quick because when you're in a hurry after cleaning a bunch of fish, you wanna get a quick dish out. That still tastes good. I do have some whole black beans that we're gonna heat up. Kernel corn, diced tomatoes with the green chilies. It gives it a little flavor, the Rotel tomatoes. This amazing, if you watch my other Catch and Cooks, you've seen me use this before, this Herdez guacamole salsa. Some flour tortillas, which I like corn for my Al Pastor and barbacoa and stuff, but for fish, it's hard to go wrong with flour. And then all I've done is diced up or sliced up an avocado. So I'm gonna cut these sheep's head into smaller strips that will be able to fit on our tacos pretty good. And I'm gonna start warming up my black beans. <laughs> and it's really easy. And the only thing we have to do next is grill these fish up. So I'm gonna be using the Chef Paul Seafood Magic. It's not too salty, so it allows you to salt to taste and it doesn't cover up this fresh fish taste of this white, mild, flaky fish called sheep's head. So that's what we're gonna use. And then the only other cooking you gotta do is heating up your tortillas with some butter. So that's it. Everything else is really just warming up and prepping. So let's get started. So I'm gonna take this sheep's head right here and just cut it into smaller manageable pieces for the tacos. So just like that in a small strip. So these are great for frying too. Man, I love fried sheep's head. But I also like fish tacos. So just cut that right in half. Look how clean that meat is. No bloodline in there, no bones. As a perfect piece of fish. So I'm gonna do that with all the rest of these fillets. Here. That's a big one there. So this is the last fillet that we're cooking. The rest we vacuum sealed and put in the freezer so we can eat on them all winter because that was plenty of meat for us and we also share it with everybody. So now that our fish is in manageable pieces, all I'm gonna do is lightly dust them with the Chef Paul Perdome Seafood Magic. Stuff's delicious, not sponsored or paid by them. They did send out a pretty cool gift box with some uh, of their sampling seasons and stuff because y'all sent an email to them and said that I use it a lot in their videos and they were cool enough to shoot me a message. But uh, this stuff's really good, I love it. So we're just gonna lightly dust it, don't need a lot because we want to taste the flavor of that nice, flaky, white, delectable, any more adjectives you want, <laughs> sheep's head. So I'm just going to kind of rub them all together. That's about all we need. Just like that. See, typically when we're blackening, I'm going to cover that whole thing in seasoning, but just lightly grilled it. We want to be able to taste that fish underneath all our vegetables. And then I am going to salt it just a little bit. So let me grab some salt. All right. Let's add just a little bit of cracked salt and some of this freshly cracked pepper. Just a little bit. 
It seems like I'm doing a lot, but there's hardly any coming out. So there we go, that's perfect. And once again, just going to mix it together like that just to get all the seasonings mostly evenly coated. It smells really good. That Chef Paul's has a great Cajun smell to it. These are ready to go in our pan. We're going to warm up some butter and start grilling them. All I did was melt 50 parts butter, 50 parts extra virgin olive oil, and it's time to lay our fish down. We have it on about medium heat because we don't want it to burn. And these are thin pieces, so it should cook pretty fast. Can y'all hear that? Wish you could smell it. It smells so good so far. Cannot wait to see and taste the finished product. Make some more room. See how it's already turning white on the edges on that medium heat? These are thin pieces. They'll cook really quick. That's about, what, maybe two fish? Maybe even one of those big ones. We yielded a lot of meat off that, though. These are gonna cook about two and a half minutes on each side, because they are thin, and they're white and flaky, so they don't take long to cook. So in two and a half minutes, we'll come and flip them. It has been two and a half minutes. So these are ready to flip. If you're unsure if it's ready to flip, that doesn't hurt to turn one over and look at it. See, that right there is perfectly cooked. So two and a half minutes. Uh, medium high heat. I got the stove in between five and six. Oh yeah, look at that. Flaky. Just a couple more pieces to flip. Oh man. And we're gonna cook these another two and a half minutes, just like that. See, that's where I have the stove at. And these are gonna be amazing. Cannot wait. They smell so good. I wanna bite down on them right now, but Lord knows they're hot. And while those are cooking, I am warming up these black beans just straight out of the can, but they do taste good. That's the brand I got, which none of this is sponsored or any of this. You know, I just go out to the grocery store and buy it. But see that? Once I finish cooking these, I am gonna warm up some of these flour tortillas and we'll pretty much be ready to go. Our fish is almost finished. It's time to warm up these tortillas. We're gonna come over to this flat cast iron skillet have just a small amount of butter on there. And we're just gonna let these sit. And now it's time to flate our fish. So here we go. Last thing you wanna do, see there's the bottom of it, that's perfectly cooked. Last thing you wanna do is have dried out fish. But you also don't wanna have really raw fish either unless you're intentionally doing it. So that five minute total cook time is perfect for a filet that size. Look at that one, that's a good one. And the last piece, get up here. That one was a stubborn one. There we go, perfect. That's that's our sheep said. We're gonna let these cool down and it's almost time to eat. It may seem complicated and a lot of layers and stuff, but it's really not. All you need is a can opener, a good knife, and a couple eyes on the stove. Let's finish warming up our tortillas. Let's see here. All right, perfect. That's what you want. You don't want them burnt, but you can do how you like. And I'm gonna do a few of these and then we'll get ready to eat. While uh, our tortillas are warming up, it doesn't take long. I just wanna try a bite of that sheep's head real quick. It's still really hot, dang. But it smells too good to not try it by itself. Mm. That is really good, I cannot wait. Mm. The flavors with the butter, salt, pepper, that chef paws, and you can still taste that delicious fish. Heck yeah, that's gonna be great. So there's our first tortilla ready to go. And we're gonna keep on doing this. Right, we heated up enough tortillas. Let's go plate up our tacos. I cannot wait. So here's our tortilla. I think we're gonna do about two a piece for now. So these are warm and soft. It's exactly what you want. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is lay a piece of fish on there. So I think about two pieces. Look how flaky that is. Man. All right, here we go. I'm gonna get a bunch on there. It's gonna be a great dinner or lunch. I think it's lunchtime right now. I haven't even looked. There we go. And we have some leftover pieces. I want to eat another one. Mm. <laughs> How can you resist that while it's still warm? Next thing we're gonna do, do some of my corn. This is just light and healthy. You know, it's not fried. There's not a lot of batter on it. It's a little messy, but that's the fun part about tacos. If you don't get messy while eating tacos, are you really eating them? 
Okay. Now we're going to do this chopped up tomato and chilies as another topping. See, typically I do like onion and cilantro and, you know, maybe some sour cream and cheese, but it's nice to change it up every now and then. And here's some avocado that I sliced up, fresh avocado, nice and ripe. Two slices on each one. Y'all, while you're watching this, uh, at the end of this video, go comment down below what your favorite toppings on tacos are, if you like them. It's just cool to hear what everybody's taste buds and opinions are. Now we're going to take some of these diced jalapenos right there. They look pretty spicy, so just a little bit just to give it a kick. And last but not least, y'all, if y'all are ever in the supermarket and see this salsa, it's so good. I asked a lady while I was in this grocery store on the aisle, like, hey, which one's the best salsa out here in terms of the salsa verde? She pointed this one and she did not steer me wrong. So here we go. Uh, we can be nice and gracious with it because I love this stuff. And then you can go and sop up the rest of the juices and stuff that fall out while you're eating it. Such a great, creamy, nice flavor. Especially with fish. Man, you can smell that. That smells good. Alrighty, y'all. Look at those tacos. Those look so good and fresh. I cannot wait to bite down. There's only one more thing that we want to do here. I've had these black beans just warming up. And this is going to be our side item. Oh, I absolutely love black beans. It's my favorite. So there we go. And I'm going to take the rest of our jalapeno slices. Stick one next to our tacos. Y'all, and these are ready to eat. Like, it looks like a gourmet dish. It didn't take much at all. Pretty much everything was canned. And the fresh fish is what makes it. Man, these look so good. Look at that. That is a delicious plate of food. Let's go eat. Now, I do have some aloe drink. This is, uh, if you never had aloe vera drinks, it's not overly powered sweet and it is very hydrating. So typically you see the aloe mixed up in there, in the little chunks, just kind of give it a shake, get it all mixed back together. And that stuff is gonna go great with uh, kind of a spicy dish like this. Mm. Oh yeah, really good. So here we go. First thing I wanna do, Let's try some of those black beans. I've been eyeing them the whole time they've been on the stove. So, there we go. Mmm, mm-hmm. Delicious. The jalapeno is going to make those pop. I didn't take a bite of it the first time because uh, I know I put a lot on this taco. Y'all, look how big that fish taco is. Let's try a bite of that here. Make sure we get every bit of the toppings in that. Mmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all want a bite? Here you go. Mm. That is phenomenal. Outstanding. Let me finish chewing. When you first take a bite, you really don't taste each individual stuff. It's layered so good and it just works together so well. The Rotel tomatoes, the corn, that salsa really tops it off. And the avocado allows you to get that creamy, nice texture along with that flaky fish. I couldn't ask for any better flavor combination right there. So let's keep on taking another bite. There's a little bit of that jalapeno that gives it just of a pop. Man, that's so good. I'm so glad I fixed these like this. Mm. <laughs> Best fish tacos I've made so far. Mm. And I've had it in a long time. Those are so good. Excuse me talking with my mouth open. But just trying to express that flavor with you. Man, it's, it's hard to express how good and fresh that tastes without you getting out there and doing it yourself. And most of this was from a can. You know, I didn't have to go out and chop a bunch of vegetables and stuff. And it was very easy, five minutes to cook that fish. It took longer to clean those sheep's head than it did to cook this whole meal. So if y'all get out there this winter and get some, catch you some sheep's head, catch you some fish, Puppy drum are good this way. And remember that it's all up to the imagination of what you want to do and how you make your tacos. There's no one set recipe to cook. It's all delicious. I'm going to keep on eating this meal. I appreciate y'all for sharing this with me. If you enjoy these catching cooks, y'all go share these videos, like these videos, and subscribe if you have not already. It helps the channel to grow so we can produce more videos like this. 
do some more catching cooks and some awesome stuff. Y'all don't forget to check out BamaSaltWater.com to pick up the hooks, the weights, the leader, and any other lures and tackle that you may need. That helps support the channel as well and allows you to get some great tackle so you can go out there and catch you some fish and maybe some dinner. So we'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I want to thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us, including this delicious plate of fish tacos. And we will see y'all later.